Oh, hey my friends, it's me, Andy Man Now. I hope you're doing absolutely awesome today. We're here volunteering at the Conservation Center for the Birds of Prey. Oh, it's gonna be great. Well, we get to check out some really cool birds, like maybe some falcons. Ooh, maybe some owls. Ooh, I really like owls. Ooh, and some hawks. Oh, well, we do gotta put in some volunteer time. We gotta help out. Hey, man has always got a plan. And maybe we might even see how these birds are trained for the flight demonstration show. Oh, it's gonna be great. Look, look who it is. This is Mr. Steven Chable. He is the director of education here. And look what he has. How are you, sir? I'm well, thank you. Oh, this is a peregrine falcon. Oh, it's a falcon. It looks really, really cool. And look at those talons. Oh, those are really cool. Oh, I wonder how fast one of these things would fly. This is actually the fastest animal on the planet. Oh, wow. 243 miles an hour when they're diving. Whoa, 243 miles an hour? That's really fast. Absolutely. He's looking right at me. <laughs> oh, I wonder what they eat. Well, you don't have to worry about them eating you. They only eat other birds. This is a bird that would eat something like a duck or a pigeon, and that speed helps them to knock those other birds out of the sky. Wow, that's really, really, really awesome. Oh, so what's their wingspan if they can fly really fast? Well, so it's not really about the wingspan. He does have about a two foot wingspan, but it's about how sleek and aerodynamic he is. So he's built like a rocket for diving out of the air. He's got some really cool eyes. So I guess, I guess he's got some really cool eyesight. Absolutely. He can see things a, a lot better than we can. Probably sees color that we can't see and has really large eyes for his body size. Oh, his body size. So how much does he weigh? He weighs about a pound, believe it or not. Not much, not much in there. And that's a, a pretty big bird to weigh oh, a pound. Wow. He's got some really cool feathers. Whoa, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, he's awesome. Oh, so how old is this falcon? This guy is actually one of our older birds. He's 21 years old this year. So he's wow. been doing this for a long time. He's been an education ambassador for his entire life. So how, how long do they live? So in the wild, he would have been lucky to make it just a few years. It's hard to be a bird out there, but um, it's possible he might live 30 or 35 years with us here taking wow. care of him. He's got a really cool beak on there. It's yeah. like he's got some holes. So tell me about his beak. Well, so the, the birds of prey like this peregrine falcon use their beak to rip their food into smaller pieces. So oh, when wow. he catches another bird in his feet, he uses that beak to tear it into manageable pieces. He's also got nostrils there on his nose. You can see those two little uh -huh. holes. He breathes through those uh, and they're really special. They allow him to keep breathing even when he's diving at 200 miles an hour or even wow. faster. So do we have some more birds that we can check out? We do, absolutely. Oh, cool, well, let's check those out. Look, I know what this is. This, this is a kind of an owl. It is. Right? What kind of an owl is this? This is called a barred owl because he has all these bars on his feathers, all these lines going across his plumage. Wow. This is the most common owl we have here in South Carolina. It's really awesome. He's got some really big eyes. So he I bet does. he can see really well. He does indeed. He can see very well in very low light. So he's nocturnal, meaning that he's mostly active at night. So he's got to use his eyes a little differently than the falcon would. Wow nocturnal that means nighttime right oh that's really 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 cool so what does he eat uh so barred owls eat a lot of things um anything that's smaller than they are but lots of things like mice and voles and insects um, we see them eating crayfish that's something that they eat a lot they live in the swamp usually in wet forests so anything you might find in there that's small enough he'll catch it in his feet and eat it oh sweet so why does he have this round thing around his eyes like that. So right? those, believe it or not, are his ears. The things around his eyes are called facial discs, those plates of feathers. And they do wow. the same thing that your ear flap does. They catch sound and send it into the to the part of his body that helps him hear. He can hear so wow. well that he can catch food he's never even seen before. Wow. An owl that has ears? That's really, really cool. So why do you have this bird here? So this bird was actually found when he was very young. Someone found him on the ground. He had fallen out of his nest. And instead of calling us, which is what they should have done, they took him home and they tried to take care of him and they created some problems. He's what we call a human imprint. He basically thinks he's a person uh, instead of <laughs> wow. thinking that he's an owl. Well, that's cool. So if we find a bird out in the wild, what should we do? So the best thing to do is take a step back and, and find someone that can help you. you can 
can always call us here at the center. We're happy to help no matter where people are and, and get them in touch with the right folks. Um, but the, the idea would be to, to make sure that there's a problem before you get involved in it. Awesome, awesome. And if I can see right, I don't know if you see it, but like there's like another, another eyelasher. He has or... a third eyelid. It's called a nictitating membrane. It comes across his eye. You can see it, it's kind of a blue color. He can protect his eye and still be able to see even um, even though he's got a protective layer over his eye. Wow, that's, that's pretty really cool. cool. Now I've heard, I don't know how true it is, can an owl really turn their head all the way around? Can they really turn their head all the way around? He can't turn his head 360 right. degrees in one direction, but he can turn it 270 degrees in wow. each direction. So yeah. he can completely turn around and look right behind him. Absolutely. Oh, that's really amazing. <laughs> I really like owls. So we've got one more bird we're gonna see? Absolutely, we do. Oh, let's go see it. Oh, look at this one. This one's really cool. Now, what is this? This is a red-tailed hawk because he has these sort of rusty red tail feathers oh, wow. that you can see there. Can you see that? Wow. This is the most common, <laughs> most common daytime hunting bird we have here in North America. Very um, bird we see very often around the roads and, and fields here in South Carolina. So they eat during the day. They eat during Ooh. the day. Yep, he is daytime active or diurnal, we call it. Oh, wow. And he looks like he has some big wings. How far does his wings get? So his wingspan is about three feet from side to side. He's wow. He's got what we call a soaring wing. So red-tailed hawks are built for traveling long distances. They can cover a lot of ground in a day. Oh, that's awesome. Well, how fast can they fly? Well, unlike the falcon, they're not really known for their speed. They're really known more for power. So they hit with this big, heavy body. He weighs three times as much as that falcon wow. we saw. So um, this is a bird that's hunting primarily things like squirrels and rats. And so um, speed isn't really as important for him as it would be for the falcon. I got you. He does have some really big old talons there. Absolutely, oh, wow. and Ooh. thick armor on them to protect them from the bites of squirrels. Well, if you look, there's a bell on his foot. Yeah, so What's this is actually one? a bird that we use in our flight demonstration. So we train him to fly uh, to help teach people more about birds of prey like this. And the bell is just a way we can keep track of him when he's flying. So if you were to fly off into the woods, we could hear the bell ringing and know where the bird is sitting. I noticed that he doesn't have one eye. Why is that? Yeah, so this bird was actually a patient in our medical facility after he was hit by a car. So he was hunting, um, as many red-tailed hawks do, by the side of the road. And when he flew down to grab his prey, um, unfortunately, he flew through the, the driving path of a car and he had injuries to that eye and unfortunately lost that eye, which is why he has to stay here with us. So you said you have a hospital here? We do, we have a hospital oh. here at the center wow. where we take care of sick birds and injured birds. We take care of about a thousand birds every year wow. uh, after they run into problems out there. Oh, that's absolutely awesome. So, Mr. Stephen, can you tell us kind of about the history about Birds of Prey? Sure, so the Center for Birds of Prey was founded back in 1991. And in the beginning, our focus was entirely on dealing with birds like this guy that ended up in trouble out there. We had that hospital from the very beginning. And what we realized was that to, to fix the problems like car collisions and entanglements, we really needed to teach people. And so that's where our education program came from. We started teaching people more about birds and we've grown and changed ever since 19. So for the last 30 years, we've been doing a, a wide variety of things related to birds of prey. Wow. And so how many birds do you have here? So our education collection, the birds that people can come and see when they come visit us, we have about 120 birds, birds like these that wow. live with us all the time. And then in our hospital, we take care of about a thousand birds every year uh, after they get injured out there. And the goal there is always to put them back out in the wild whenever we can. So how many how many different species of birds did you say you guys have here? So in our educational collection, we have about 50 different kinds of birds of prey wow. from all around the world. Birds like red-tailed hawks from here in South Carolina and birds from Africa and Asia and Europe and South America. Wow. Only the, the raptors, the foot-grasping predatory birds oh, okay, are the ones cool. that we keep here. That's why it's called birds of prey. Oh, that's great. If anybody really kind of wants to help out and support all these birds, what do they do? So that's a great question. So one thing they could do is come and visit us and see our educational programs. We're open Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Um, and we do flight demonstration programs like the one that we're gonna go see. Um, we also um, are funded largely by people in our community, people who help by giving us money or giving us time. We have oh, volunteers wow. like yourself that come oh, out and help yeah. us do work uh, to help care for these birds and take care of them and teach people more about them. That's absolutely awesome. All right, my friends, now we get to help out with training some birds for a flight demo. 
So what are these two birds that we're gonna be using today? These are called Harris Hawks. They're one of the only cooperative birds of prey in all of the world. They work as a team, which is pretty cool. And they're found right here in the United States in the desert. So right now, Katie and Audrey are gonna call them in to this perch. Here oh, comes wow. one. Oh, wow. Here it comes. Wow, look at that. Oh, and what did she put on? She put So she gave him a reward. She put a little piece of beef on wow. the perch. The other one didn't do exactly what he was supposed to do, but he flew exactly. right past. They get wow. rewarded. It's called positive reinforcement. We give them a little bit of food. Um, we use beef in our training um, when they do what we ask them to do. So this guy got a reward. The other one that didn't do exactly what he was asked didn't get a reward. Oh, wow. Oh, she's about to call him over there. Oh, wow. That's really awesome. <laughs> And just us being here helps prepare them um, because usually birds don't like to be around people and so they're a little nervous. So having us this close is helpful. We'll That's see if we awesome. can bring them in from over here this time. Oh, let's see. <laughs> oh, wow, can you see that over in the tree over there? That's cool. Oh, look, here one comes now. Oh, wow, check it out. Oh, hey there, buddy. <laughs> That's awesome. And he got his treat. He got his reward. That's absolutely awesome. What was there? Oh, oh wow, there's the other one. <laughs> this is really cool. Training birds must be really fun. It is a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and of course, they've got their little bells on them. Right, they've you know got where bells. At. And they also have radio transmitters. So you can see oh, attached wow. to their tail a little antenna there. That's so that if they decide really not to do what we ask and fly away, we can find them again. So what, what actually keeps them here and not flying away? The only thing that keeps them here is the fact that they've been trained, that staying here gets them everything they want. They get rewarded wow. for being here. And so they generally want to stay here with us. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. That's absolutely awesome. So we've got some more, some more training. We do. We have some training that you're going to help us with. These oh, birds wow. hunt rabbits, and you're actually going to be the rabbit for us today. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's try it. All right, so what actually are we going to be doing to train these with the rabbit? Well, so Handyman how you're not actually going to be the rabbit. You're just going to be the power for the rabbit. Oh, wow. Here in my bag, I have what's called the dummy bunny. Oh, He's just wow. a rolled up ball of carpet. <laughs> he looks kind of like a rabbit. You're going to take this stick. And when oh. I tell you to, you're going to run so that the bunny follows behind you. And the hawks are going to fly in. And when they catch you, well, sorry, when they catch the rabbit, then uh, you just let go of the string, OK? OK. Sound awesome. good? That sounds great. All Let's right. do this. Got a little treat on there. <laughs> He's like, oh, it must taste really good. Look at this one. What is this? This is a kite. So believe it or not, just like the toy at the beach, there's a bird called a kite. And this one is called a yellow-billed kite because guess what color his beak is? It's yellow. Oh, and he has a really big wingspan. He does. The kites have very large wings and especially long tails that help them to hang in the wind uh, and catch their favorite food, which are insects, things like dragonflies and grasshoppers. Oh, wow. And they actually catch that food in their feet, which is pretty cool stuff. Oh, well, how fast can they fly? Well, fast enough to catch a dragonfly, but not quite as fast as the falcon. They could probably dive at 80 or 90 miles an hour if they needed to. Too. Wow, that's really, really awesome. So we're gonna see it fly today, We're gonna right? see him fly and we'll see him catching food to kind of imitate what he would be doing out there in the wild if he were hunting. Oh wow, there he goes. Oh wow, that's awesome. So, so what, what Audrey is going to do, she's going to toss little pieces of food into the air and he's gonna catch them in his feet. Whoa, wow. So that's if amazing. those little pieces of food were insects, that's exactly how he would be hunting them. He'd be catching that food in his feet and then bringing the food up to his mouth and eating all while he stays in flight. Wow, that's awesome. Most birds of prey stop to eat their meals. The red-tailed hawk and the peregrine falcon and the barred owl, they all stop to eat the things that they catch. But the kites, they don't usually stop very often. They feed on their prey while they're flying. Wow, here he comes through the trees. He's really good at catching stuff. <laughs> How long will they fly 
before they actually stop. So in some cases, kites have to fly the entire day just to catch enough food to survive. So um, our Mississippi kites here in South Carolina, we know that they'll stay in the air from sunrise to sunset looking for food. So one of the cool things that kites do is they grab food right off of tree branches. So if we imagine that Audrey's hand is a tree, he's gonna come in and grab that food like a snake or a lizard right off of the branches. Wow. He missed. He missed it. That's all right though, that was pretty cool. Handyman Howl. This is one of my favorite birds of prey. This is actually the only bird of prey in all of North America that nests under the ground. They live in burrows, kind of like the ones we've mimicked up here in our in our flying field. This is a burrowing owl. A burrowing owl. Oh, this is gonna be really cool. Oh, look, here it goes. Oh, look. There she goes. So usually they don't use burrows made out of plastic like these. Typically they nest in burrows made by other animals, things like prairie dogs and groundhogs, which is one of the issues that burrowing owls face is that many of the animals they depend on are treated as pests. And so if we got rid of all those pest animals that these guys need, they wouldn't have a nest or a, a hole in the ground to use. Oh, it's really tiny. Yeah, they're not very big. They only weigh about 100 grams, about as much as a stick of butter. Really? Yeah. Wow. They eat a lot of insects and a lot of mice. Uh, one of the coolest things about burrowing owls is they decorate their nests. They actually bring things to their nest to make them more attractive. And the thing that they bring most often is coyote dung. Oh, wow. You heard that right. They yeah. bring poop to their nest. And we think that it helps by attracting insects to their nest for them to eat. Oh, they, wow. We feel like teaching about them is very important. We want people to understand um, that their populations are declining. And again, it's probably because of the fact that prairie dogs and groundhogs are declining as well. Um, so she was here, um, was brought here as a part of our breeding program um, to be an educational ambassador. It's really cool. Now, where are they originally from? So burrowing owls are found primarily in the Great Plains here in the United States. So the area west of the Mississippi River and east of the Rocky Mountains, out in a big wide open, uh, in the big wide open prairies where there aren't many trees, which is one of the reasons we think they evolved this really cool behavior of hanging out under the ground. If there's no trees to hide in, you gotta hide somewhere, and under the ground is the next best thing. Right, yeah. You can see the little tracker on her. Right, you can see her radio transmitter. She wears a little backpack that holds the radio transmitter, and that's that antenna you can see on her back. So is this one of the birds you actually get to see at the show? This is one of the birds we use in our flight demo. She's in just about every demonstration we do, and people oh. sure do love her. So oh, you can come cool. and see her. Oh, look how there she goes. Wow. Hey there. You're getting all kinds of treats. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Steven, thank you so much for letting us come have some fun today, right? It was a lot of fun. Yes, it was. But you know, I hear that there's a lot of tools for avian educator like yourself. So what are some of the tools that you use? We do use a lot of different tools. Some of them um, are, are pretty obvious. We wear gloves. These birds have sharp claws on their fists. So we wear these gloves, sometimes called gauntlets, to help protect our hand from their claws. Also makes for a nice, comfortable perch for the bird to stand yeah. on. So we use a glove. We use a bag. These are special bags that we use to keep the rewards in, the things like the dummy bunny and, and some of the other equipment. Um, we talked about the bell, um, but uh, just in case a bird decides not to do what it's supposed to do, we use these little things. This is a radio transmitter. Wow. This little thing makes a, a signal that we can hear with this special piece of equipment. This is the radio receiver. So this antenna, ooh, look out. Wow. This would help us to track a bird if they were to fly away. We can use this to listen for the sound that this little guy makes, and it tells us which direction we need to go in to find, find the it. bird. Oh, wow, yeah. that's really cool. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. This 
is a scale. So um, we use positive reinforcement to train these birds, which means we give them a reward of food when they do what we ask them to do. Um, if a bird's not the right weight, they might not be interested in food. So every day the birds all get weighed so we know how much they weigh, so we know how much food to give them so they get an appropriate diet wow, every really, day. That's really, really cool. That's and it's a scale really with a little cool. perch on the top. That's awesome. And then finally, the most important tools in our trade, we do a lot of cleaning. And these are some of the cleaning oh, supplies wow. that we use to clean up after these birds. We've got scrub brushes of a variety of kinds. We've got soap. Um, we've got disinfectants. And I'm gonna give this to you because um, we wanna thank you for volunteering with us today yeah. to go and clean some enclosures. Well, I guess we're gonna have to. Come on, let's go. Well, my friends, we gotta do our volunteer duty. We're in the burrowing owls enclosure. <laughs> we gotta do some cleaning. Mm, let's see, got a brush here. Let's get some soap on here. Oh, oh, oh yep. You know, we've had such an awesome day today here at the Birds of Prey. Oh, we've met some really cool birds. Oh, we even helped train some for the show. It was great. We even got to watch some really cool birds fly in the air right over our heads. Oh, and we learned what we need to do if we ever find one out in the wild. Totally awesome. Wow. It's such an awesome day today here at Birds of Prey. Well, thanks for watching Handyman Man Howe. We'll see you later.